Today, I'll be walking you through how you design your own custom character with their own custom physics engine in Game Builder's Garage. This one in particular resembles Mario in how he moves around and how he can accelerate and jump in midair, etc. In a previous video, I showed you how to code a single jump, a double jump, a controlled jump, and basic one-dimensional movement with a max speed. I'm not gonna show you how to code those today because I don't like reruns. If you want to know how to make those blocks of code, please check out those videos. Today, I'll be showing you how you assemble the character to make something that's functional. In order, I'll be discussing how we select the right anchor point system to assemble our custom character, how to stay in two dimensions if you want the 2D level, how to use artificial gravity, and how you can assemble everything together to make it all work. First, I'll discuss roughly the different parts of a custom character so that then when we assemble them together, you'll kind of understand what the function of each one is. First, we need to choose what type of anchor point we want, which will control the rotation of the character. Second, we have a combination of moving blocks, rotating blocks, hinges, sliders, etc. Whatever it is we're gonna use to actually make the motion. And this is gonna be like the core of the actual model of the custom character that's gonna give us the motion. And this is the most complicated part. This is the actual physics engine. This is the part where we're gonna do the math. We're gonna use coordinates, etc., to figure out how much we want to move the character and determine what the angles, etc., are going to be to then feed that into the blocks and get the character to where we want it to be. Third, we have the aesthetic part of the custom character. This is the part that, you know, makes the face. We can have a 3D model. We can have multiple blocks, hinges, etc., to like make the animation, however it is we want to do that. The animation is tied to the block that moves mathematically however we want, and it's gonna be moving relative to an anchor point or whatever that allows us to control the rotation. First, let's discuss the base of the character. And so you understand a little bit why that's necessary. First, well, I'll show the option of no base. So here we just have the moving block, it has its own physics engine, etc., and we're just gonna use it as is. Here's our moving block. I call him Rectangulo, because he's pretty rectangular. And uh, you'll notice that without any sort of base, he just kind of like flops around. And this is, uh, this is pretty bad, all right? Like you don't usually want this to be happening to your character or if you do, you wanna be able to control it. So the first type of base for our character is no base. One where the moving block isn't really attached to anything else as a parent. What if we don't want him to flop around like a Magikarp? Well, what we can do is attach him to some other type of object. The two main options for this are going to be a free slider to an anchor point and a UFO. Let's see what happens when I connect my moving block to this fixed anchor point using a free slider. And to be clear, this anchor point is just an immovable, not solid, not visible point. It's just like some spot in space that does not move. And this free slider is allowed to only move in X and Y and not in Z. So what is the effect of the slider? You can see that I'm no longer flopping around. I'm not rotating weirdly at all. And so all my physics are pretty good. In essence, the free slider stops all rotation. The next major option is to instead connect our moving block to a UFO. And this UFO lets us move around also smoothly without many issues. Again, we're not really rotating around weirdly. Everything is working smoothly. Both the free slider and the UFO block rotation. So how do we choose which one? Well, they each have their own specific advantages and disadvantages. A free slider, for example, when you're trying to work in a two-dimensional level, you can lock a free slider, so it is literally impossible to move in that third dimension. That way, you have absolutely no fears of going out of the plane, which can be really bad in a two-dimensional level. I, I cannot stress that enough. However, a free slider has one major disadvantage, and that is how it interacts with teleporters. For the purposes of the demonstration, I made the anchor point a little blue sphere so you can see exactly what's going on. Here, if I jump into the teleport entrance, you notice that my custom character does not go to that teleport exit. I'm now somewhere completely different. However, my anchor point, that blue sphere, did go to the desired teleport exit. And so here, if I jump into that teleporter again, nothing's happening because my motion is relative to that blue sphere. And so that blue sphere, it's already at the exit. It's not going anywhere. So the main issue when using a free slider to an anchor point is that first, your custom character can teleport somewhere really weird if the distance between the anchor point and the custom character is large. Second is that the teleporter is basically one-time use. Does this mean that teleporters are off limits if you're using a free slider? No. You can completely use this just fine when you use a checkpoint system. So if at the very beginning of the level, you teleport the player so they respawn back to a checkpoint using a swap game node on, 
then you'll be fine. If you're using a checkpoint setup that does not break the player character, like one where you just teleport them back instead of letting the player character die, then this is a huge, huge problem. Suppose we pick the UFO instead. Well, here we can go through the teleporter absolutely no problem. We're going exactly as we expect for a normal player character because we're bringing the UFO with us. So a UFO has no problems with teleporters. Additionally, with a UFO, it's really easy to program a rotation for the character. So here I have a left stick that maps to divide that input by 100, and then we put that into left right for the UFO. So here, the UFO itself, it barely moves, it barely affects the physics engine because I'm only putting a very, very small amount of horizontal speed into it, but it allows the entire object to kind of like rotate and turn as we're going through level. A UFO has two main disadvantages. First is that it has its own physics associated with it. Like here, in order to stop the UFO from giving me some floaty jumps, I set my vertical speed to zero. Just so you can see, here if I set my vertical speed to one, then my jumps are suddenly very slow to fall down because we're trying to accelerate through the UFO's natural ability to stay in place vertically. The second major disadvantage is that a UFO has mass to it, even if we disable that vertical floatiness. Here, with this mass, here is how I jump around. And you see roughly what the movement of my character is. If I instead make the UFO gigantic, now it has a very large mass. So when I move my character around, it's way slower. Like here, this is my max speed. And so there are ways to deal with this, but you're gonna have to do a correction factor added in to deal with the mass of the UFO for whatever fix engine you're working with. The other problems have some pretty simple workarounds. You either change the numbers for the physics engine or you change the numbers for the UFO and you just deal with it. The biggest real disadvantage for working with a UFO is that it does not come with natural protection against moving in the third dimension if you want to make a 2D level. So here, for example, let's say that I have the cylinder in the way and now, oh, we collide with that cylinder, but because collision in GBG is in three dimensions, now we are off of the level. For 2D level, that's a huge deal. And that means that if you want to make a 2D level that uses a UFO, then you have to bring in an additional part for your physics engine that I'll get to later. Those are the basics for how you construct a base for your custom character. But here's one more detail about how you can assemble it all together. Because we're gonna be applying forces using moving blocks and rotating objects, etc., and we need to make sure that the character moves the way we want it to. Here I have two sets of moving blocks that are attached to these boxes. The difference is whether I put that moving block at the center of the object versus the side of the object. And so here you can see that if I apply a force to that object, we're applying the force at that moving block. So if that moving block is off center, then we'll be applying a torque to that object as opposed to just lifting it up or moving it around through its center of mass. This is really important because this can cause your object to rotate in weird ways if you're not ready for it. In general, the best strategy is to connect the moving block center to center to where the center of mass is supposed to be for your object. Now that we have the moving block that's gonna be making up our custom character attached to a base, now let's talk about the actual physics engine. Since I'm choosing a UFO as the base for this custom character, I need to have a code block to stay in two dimensions because I wanna make a two dimensional game engine. So here, what I'm gonna do is take this moving block, which is a separate moving block in speed mode and attach it center to center to the main core. For this moving sphere, what I want to do is if I find myself at a positive Z position, I wanna go backwards. I wanna to go to a negative Z direction. And if I'm at negative Z, I wanna go in the plus Z direction. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a location sensor to find the location of the moving sphere, which is at the center of the object. And then I'm gonna take our Z coordinate and put that into a map. This map is going to multiply that Z coordinate by negative 10 and then feed that into the Z speed. So if we are at Z equals plus one meter, then this block of code will give us a Z speed of 10 meters per second back to Z equals zero. While this is not perfect, this correction is pretty good for staying in the plane. So I can no longer easily find myself going off of this two dimensional world. Now let's talk about gravity. Gravity is very important for a platformer. It determines how long you stay up in the air to maneuver around. It also determines how fast you land to be able to gain the ability to jump again. 
and so setting the gravity is very important. While we do have a reduced gravity node on, you may not want to change the gravity for the whole world. You may just want to change the gravity for your single custom character. First you can see, without artificial gravity, my character is a lot floatier than I want him to be. He's spending way too long in the air. So what I'm going to do is have an artificial gravity constant here as negative 0.25. I'm going to feed that straight into the Y for this moving block, which is in acceleration mode. And so what's going to happen is that now this feels a lot better. Naturally, I could also have gravity that goes to the right. So here I'm going to give artificial gravity of 1 in positive x. So here I have plus x gravity. So my character falls to the right side of the map. But you see that I also have regular gravity. I also still fall down. But what if I don't want that to happen? I want to only have right gravity. This has two steps. First, I'm going to figure out our current gravity and then remove that. So I'm going to put an acceleration sensor to the block and have a number object to read out. From this, we can see that our downward acceleration is roughly negative 0.14, negative 0.13. Since I know now that gravity is 0.13 in Y, counteract that with a positive 0.13 in Y, and then I can put whatever gravity vector I want. You can go in whatever direction, you can do whatever vector math, whatever. Of course, you can play with the numbers to get rid of gravity in the most accurate way. You can also use zero gravity to make sure every object that you have has no gravity. That means you also can't make anything slippery. But in general, this is how you can counteract gravity and just make gravity like left gravity or right gravity, whatever. For the actual physics engine, the way that you construct it is to just add the different pieces of the motion to these moving blocks and assemble it all together. So here I have the code block from the other video for how to code a jump. Single jump, double jump, control jump. And those just feed straight into my acceleration. This is the code block for 1D motion with a max speed in X. And so that just goes straight into the X acceleration. What we're doing is we're just taking each of these little code blocks and combining them all into moving blocks in acceleration or speed mode to just combine all these effects. This way I have a character that can move left and right with a max speed and he can jump and we stay in the 2D plane, and we have artificial gravity. We're literally just adding up the effects. Here, as an extra example, I have this bird character, which can flap its wings, I can turn it around with tilt controls, it's completely customized, you can turn all the angles, etc. So how does this bird work? So what I do is I have this UFO as the base to be able to move around the bird, and I can completely control the rotation. Then I have several hinges. These hinges are going to control the X angle and the Y angle. But the main important note here is that I have some moving boxes and spheres that are very large in mass. The reason is that hinges actually will obey Newton's third law. Like if you try to rotate with an angle, you will have an equal and opposite force between the two objects that are hinged together. And so it's helpful to keep these blocks very large in mass so that you have a stable rotation relative to whatever other object. Given these individual objects, then you just feed in whatever angle. Like here, for example, I'm just passing the average Y tilt into this Y angle and the average X tilt into this X angle. And overall, this allows me to completely tilt the bird pretty freely in X and Y. When connecting the different physics modules together, remember that you can attach it to different parts of a custom character. So here, for example, I have a block of code that makes a moving block that goes forward. And this is in its own local reference frame. This moving block is connected to this box in the bird. This box has been rotated in Y, so it steers left right, but it has not been moved up or down. So when this box moves forward, it does not get affected by the up and down motion. Similarly, this code block is responsible for making a moving block that goes straight up whenever we flap our wings, so that whenever you flap, you ascend. And so this block is attached directly to this core part of the bird that has already been rotated, so it is very close to the actual center of mass of the bird character. While the final code can be very complicated, it's important to realize that you just build up the custom character bit by bit until you finally have one working piece. You just have your base, you connect your physics engine with different blocks that move around, and then use different little modules, different little aspects of that character's movement, and you feed them in individually to build up how the custom character moves. Just remember to thoroughly test your custom character on items such as slopes, floors, moving lifts, 
etc. to make sure that you understand exactly how the physics of this character are going to be before you start building a whole level around it. As per usual, I'll be sharing this sample code in the description below. But yeah, those are the fundamentals of how you make a custom character. If you like this content, feel free to like, subscribe, and I'll see you around guys. Later! Ciao.